Hello, welcome back to uh, the end of antiquity. We're going to be taking a brief intermission here, and as promised, uh, I got a lot of questions um, about recommended reading for this period, um, specifically the reign of Justinian, mid sixth century Eastern Rome, Byzantium, um, some of the historical writings, um, and so I just want to take a quick minute to do a video with some book recommendations of uh, stuff that I have read um, that I think is really good uh, if you're trying to want a sort of um, more in-depth history or also a sort of narrative telling of the stuff that I've been covering in the videos in a lot more detail than I've been covering it. Um, and so, you know, I thought I would, uh, you know, do a short video about that and show some of the books. Um, there are some books as well that I'll mention that I don't own and have not read, but I think uh, are probably worth looking into as well. But, you know, if we're talking about Justinian's reign and we're talking about, um, you know, the main historian of this period, why we know so much about this century, it's because of Procopius, who wrote in exhaustive detail um, all of the things that happened during the reign of Justinian, and not just about Justinian, but about Belisarius as well. It's thanks to Procopius that we know about Belisarius' wife, about how she went on campaign with him, um, about the things that Belisarius was thinking, what he said. I mean, in terms of sort of a, a late ancient world, early medieval world uh, history uh, that has survived that uh, gives us what it's like, to, you know, a day in the life of um, this period. Procopius is unmatched and um, his works on the period um, begin with the Wars of Justinian, which is a quote unquote official history um, of this period. And uh, it's a very thick book, as you can see. It's actually, it was actually written in seven books and all seven of those books are in here, but it's very dense text. Um, and it kind of jumps around. Each book is kind of about a different um, sort of theater or era or segment of Justinian's reign. So it's not chronological. Um, a lot of the early chapters in here um, are about the war with the Sassanid Persians uh, or leading up to uh, Justinian's ascension. Obviously, you've got a bunch of stuff here. He, he gives a lot of the history that leads up to sort of Justinian's reign, a lot of the historical context as well, which is really nice. And this translation of the book tells you when he's talking about that stuff, what year he's referring to, where he's referring to it. Um, but it's a lot about the Persians in the eastern front of the Roman Empire, and then he does a whole thing on the uh, the conquest of the Vandals, which I referenced this book pretty heavily in my video that I did. He, there's a huge, huge uh, section in here of um, the conquest of um, of Italy as well. And you can see, actually, just happened to turn to this page. Here's a map of Ravenna, which was the Gothic capital of Italy at this time and uh, a medallion of Theoderic, uh, king of the Goths in Italy. So, um, and sort of what led to his reign. We get a, you get a lot of great historical detail about all of the people in this period, their history, where they came from, the history of their people. Procopius went all out in covering um, essentially every possible thing you would want to know about 6th century Rome. He talks about uh, in sort of a swath of, you know, 180 to 100 years here. Now, this is, like I said, very dense and very... Um, it can be very dry, let's put it that way. Um, but it also, there's a lot of insight and a lot of interest. Um, Procopius sort of inserts a lot of quotes that are essentially fictional. You can see here, there's a quote, something someone said, and usually these are like long soliloquies or, you know, addressing the reader um, about this really long thing that apparently someone spoke in, in, terms of, in terms of this historical event. Obviously, he wasn't there for all of these. These aren't direct quotes, but it sort of gives you sort of his perspective about what um, what he was trying to get across in terms of writing this history. He wrote this history in the classical style of the ancient Greek and Roman uh, historians and philosophers that came before him. That was what he was emulating. So there's a lot of that, but a lot of really rich detail in here as well. Um, just moment to moment things that happen, how battles, you know, it's because of Procopius that we know about how the Battle of Dara was tactically arrayed and how, um, you know, the different flanks of the army behaved in that battle, which is pretty uh, pretty good for this period and not a lot of, you know, we don't have a lot of tactical reconstructions of battles necessarily um, in the early uh, early Byzantine period. So highly recommend if you want the total, complete, comprehensive history, Wars of Justinian by Procopius. Um, he This is uh, the definitive, you know, contemporaneous uh, histories of, of the era. Very dense though. You're, it's going to take you a while to read. You can't just really sit down and read this cover to cover. You're going to have to probably take it in chunks. Now, what's interesting about Procopius is that this is not the only history he wrote of this era. He also wrote this thing called the Secret History, which was discovered a lot later, um, you know, sort of secret, essentially secret, buried somewhere. And um, it turns out 
that while Procopius was busy glorifying the Emperor Justinian, um, who, you know, he has some disdain for, we would find out uh, later, um, that, uh, you know, while the, this is the official imperial history of this reign, he was also keeping a secret diary. How many historians do you know uh, are keeping sort of a, a secret ad appendix or addendum to the official account, the imperial account that they're writing. The secret history is really interesting. Um, it is sort of Procopius unfiltered about what he thinks about all the people and events that happen in here, written down in secret and private. Um, and sort of, what's the best way to, uh, the best equivalent I can say for the secret history is that it's like a salacious alternate version, um, a salacious satire of what was going on in here. He's got some really fantastical things that obviously are exaggerated and, um, satirized and um, made more comedic. Um, but it's a really unfiltered view at his personal view of everything that was going on, of the people of this period, of Justinian, of Belisarius, of Antonina, of Theodora, of the important people of the day. A lot shorter, right? Um, and perhaps somewhat more interesting because if you if you know this, even if you haven't read this, if you know the general gist of Justinian's reign, this gives you a really interesting window into someone who was li who lived through it, who was there, and um, who had some things to say about what was going on. So if you're looking for the, the the complete history of these of this era, the Wars of Justinian and the Secret History by Procopius is where you should start if you want the whole thing. Now, <clears throat> keeping in the history theme. I wanted to show this book here. This is Maurice's Strategicon. Uh, this is the Handbook of Byzantine Military Strategy. We haven't got to Maurice yet, but he was the emperor after Justin II, I believe, um, who was the emperor after Justinian. So we're talking about end of the 6th century. We're talking about uh, 570s, 580s, 590s. And Maurice um, was a general as well. And he uh, created or commissioned the creation of this handbook, this military manual um, of this period's uh, Byzantine battle tactics. And um, this is, you can see here, this is, he's actually written out how the formations should be arrayed. Each of these Ks represents a specific kind of unit. And he shows how, you know, uh, a, an infantry formation would look, how many rows deep it'll be. Um, and it's a really interesting read. I've read this thing cover to cover. Again, very dry because it is a military training manual um, for people who want to understand at this period in history how the Byzantine army functions essentially and he's got all these diagrams about how things go he talks about the different units and which units are standing where how big you know one of these units is in sort of the general overall line um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here that um, if you really want an understanding of the Byzantine military uh, and how it functioned in this century this is right here the gold standard because it will tell you exactly all of that stuff um, and so if you have an interest in that and sort of the tactical makeup the doctrine stuff like that uh, this is what you want to look at now it's a little hard to keep track of if you're not a military person and you, and you don't speak Greek, um, because a lot of very similar names for things. Um, but there's something in here that I see if I see if I can find it. There's a section in here where he talks about, um, maybe it might be this one. No, this is various tactics and drills. Yeah, he talks about how to water the horses, enemy prisoners, what to do, you know, where, how to carry your rations, when you should attack, when you should defend. It's actually a fairly interesting, um, read, uh, just to get a sense of the way that they were thinking about military operations. But there's a section in here, I'm not sure if I can find it, where he goes through one by one, and, oh, here's one about sieges, book 10, all about Byzantine sieges. But there's a section in here where he goes through all one by one, every single tribe and neighboring nation and peoples that the Romans are bordering or have fought with. And he goes through and talks about the strategy for each one, how to defeat the Scythians, how to defeat the Persians, how to defeat, you know, the Slavs. And it's really fascinating to see all of the techniques that um, the Byzantines came up with in order to defeat their enemies and how each of those were so different from each other. Um, he talks about not chasing the Scythians or, you know, the Scythians were another name for sort of the, the horsemen of the, of the Eurasian steppe, so very similar to the Turks. Turkic peoples, those kinds of folks, about how you have to be really disciplined and not chase them because they like to do a feigned retreat where they pretend to run away with their cavalry and you chase them and then suddenly you're surrounded or pincered in a trap. So Maurice's Strategicon, we'll be talking more about Maurice as the series goes along. This is a really cool military history handbook um, of the period. And if you have a really, if you have an interest in that, um, definitely worth reading. You can actually bang this out pretty quick. It's not a long book. Um, it's got some interesting insights in there. All right, so that's for the histories. Those are the main ones I would recommend. Now, in terms of historical fiction, there's a whole bunch from this period. There's also the very classic book, um, Count Belisarius, which is kind of, I would say, in, in recent modern memory, um, the book that sort of popularized this era, uh, popularized Belisarius as a character. And that one is obviously a classic. A lot of the historical fiction about Belisarius and Justinian um, draw from Count Belisarius and what that was doing. It sort of paints Belisarius as a, as a sort of tragic hero 
um, with a heart of gold. And that's kind of the way that uh, sort of the popular imagination sees Belisarius. But um, in that tradition, I wanted to make uh, people aware of this particular trilogy here uh, by Jack Ludlow, which is actually a pen name for two different authors, I believe, uh, or mm, maybe it's a single author. I can't remember. But um, this is a series I actually kind of picked up on a whim. I was at a used bookstore, and I saw this Triumph uh, book, and it sounded interesting. And I was like, I'll pick that up. And that this series right here is what really got me into this period of history, what really made me dig deep and find more. It's very well written. Um, and it is the story, essentially, of Belisarius, Belisarius and Justinian. Obviously, it's called The Last Roman and is therefore a reference to Belisarius, who is, who is known as The Last Roman. Um, and this first book called Vengeance is about his childhood and upbringing, which we really don't know anything about. So this is mostly fictionalized, although it is believably fictionalized. Um, the, it, it posits this idea that Belisarius was the youngest son of a, uh, of a frontier um, East Roman uh, border prefect, essentially, in the Balkans. And um, sort of that experience being raised by him uh, and what happens to his family sort of leads Belisarius on, on his uh, way to becoming who we know he is in history. So fictionalized here, but surrounded by historical elements. Obviously, Vitalian's um, rebellion uh, plays a big part in this first book. Um, I haven't talked about that really because it predates... Um, most of Justinian's reign, it happened during the time of Anastasius, but that becomes a pivotal moment here in this fictional account of Belisarius' life. This is book one. Book two is called Honor, and this is where we really pick up the history. This is uh, where, we f where we find um, uh, Belisarius serving in the east against the Sassanids. So we have the Battle of Dara, the Battle of um, uh, the one that I played. What was the other one? Uh, not Cassilinum. Um, <laughs> why can't I remember what it's called right now? I'm drawing a blank. The Battle of Kalinicum. Oh my god, I'm getting old. Um, I just played it. The Battle of Kalinicum. So it talks about the Battle of Kalinicum. Um, and, it, and this is where you get really introduced into uh, Justinian as he takes the throne. Uh, he becomes a major character in this book, um, which is really interesting. It explores the relationship between Belisarius and, and Justinian. It explores the relationship between Belisarius and... Um, and his wife Antonina and Theodora. And this is where you get a lot of the flavor, a lot of narrative flavor of sort of this really core, you know, four-way relationship between the general and his wife and his wife's best friend, the empress and the, and the emperor. And it's very interesting. Um, the Nika riots are in this one, I believe. Um, this is really where it starts to track closely with history. And obviously, if you want something that's narrative, right, you want to sort of have dialogue and, and sort of structured, like, um, you know, structured in acts, uh, narrative arcs and stuff like that. This series is really good. And then finally, The Last Roman Triumph. Um, this is where you get a lot of the Italian campaign, the Siege of Naples, the Siege of Rome. Um, Syracuse, I believe, is in here. Uh, Belisarius' decision at Ravenna uh, being recalled back to the east. Um, a lot of this is sort of previewing what we're going to see in the next couple of episodes. But in general, the Last Roman trilogy by Jack Ludlow is fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. I tore through these really fast. They really bring the period to life. Um, they bring the characters to life. Um, and it's just a really great way to experience history in sort of this format. So uh, these are what I would recommend. Um, if, you're, if you want to learn more, you, you know, a little bit of everything, some military tactics, some street history, some uh, narrative historical fiction. All of this is, uh, you can do no wrong. And there's plenty more books on this period. If you you know start with these, you could go down a rabbit hole that's basically endless um, under Justinian's reign. One of the most well-known, uh, thanks to Procopius, emperors of Eastern Rome, and certainly one of the most active and interesting periods in history, at least in my opinion. Um, with that said, I do want to take a quick mention and say that I am not, uh, the channel is going to be in a lull for a bit uh, for a number of reasons. Um that uh, basically I've been really busy lately. I've been really busy with a project and I will show you what that looks like. A little sneak peek of something I've been working on here. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it too much now. There will come a time for this, but uh, if you wanna know more, you could check out on Twitter. If you check out Volko Runke's Twitter feed, you'll see some pictures of this and um, there's a little bit more information there. I am taking this uh, this week to GMT uh, weekend at the warehouse. Um, meeting up with a friend there. It's been a while since I've been to GMT. I think I went five years ago to their weekend at the warehouse. Um, I'm very excited both to see my friend and play some games, but also to um, let people see this for the first time. And uh, and so I will be gone. Uh, and that is why there will be a lull in the channel. While I am gone, I don't have any content scheduled. Unfortunately, I've gone through my backlog of stuff. Uh, but I will try and document my time at the convention. And um, when I get back, we will get back full speed over here to the Mediterranean world as I play Belisarius, the Byzantine Empire Strikes. There is a uh, scenario, I was gonna play the whole thing, but there, I found out there is a scenario that is specific to um, 
the the conquest of Italy. So we'll be playing that. It'll be a bit of a shorter game, which will be nice. And I will go into the mechanics and we'll talk about Belisarius's uh, campaigns in Italy, which uh, would last for uh, quite a long time. And the war in Italy would last for nearly 20 years. Uh, approaching the end of Justinian's reign. So uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you on the other side when I am back and have had a chance to uh, collect myself and uh, go through the footage I'm going to take. Be well.